<clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I've been wanting to make this video for you guys for some time. I finally got around to it today. This will probably be the most important video I've ever uh, made for you guys. Uh, I've talked to you all consistently about the importance of pre-planning your meals ahead of time. Uh, the, I call it the 24 before concept, 24 hours before. So pre-planning your meals uh, for the next day ahead of time uh, to uh, ensure success for the next day, to ensure that you have uh, a game plan for the next day and you're not waking up in the morning uh, winging it and figure, you know, thinking to yourself, what the hell it is, you know, what the hell is it I'm going to eat today? Okay. The pre-planning your meals is a, a foundational trait of successful dieters and successful weight loss maintainers. Okay. It, it can be a total game changer. All right. I, I cannot stress enough how, how much this can really start to move the needle for you if you do it. Okay. Because you at least wake up with a, a, a structure. Obviously, things don't always go as planned. Okay, and you'll have to pivot and make some changes. But you'll at least have, you know, a, a plan of attack that you can actually see uh, ahead of time to where you'll feel confident about moving through your day. Okay. Um, on top of that, another thing that I've continually reinforced to you guys um, in terms of successful dieting is eliminating decision, choice, and excessive variety from uh, your plan of attack, okay? Um, that means, as I've told you before, you want to build your diet around about 8 to 10 foundational foods, okay? Three to four sources of protein, uh, three to four sources of carbohydrates, Maybe you have one or two sources of direct dietary fat, but you want to limit it to about eight to 10 total foods. Okay. And then from those foundational foods, you are going to just create some basic foundational meals. Okay. Maybe two breakfast options, two to three breakfast options, and then two to three options for lunch slash dinner, because usually lunch and dinner uh, are inter inter interchangeable. Um, and then beyond that, you, you want you you want to keep your meals in components and simple. Your meals should be comprised of of primarily single ingredient or macro dominant foods. Simple stuff that you can track easily, prepare easily, uh, etc. You will run into problems trying to do this and track macros and track calories and count calories if you are trying to eat. And, and, and make home style meals like lasagnas and stews and chilies and, um, you know, uh, casseroles, those things are, there's so much mental masturbation involved in trying to track and quantify that stuff. It can be done, but it's a royal pain in the ass. Okay. You're going to pull your hair out trying to do that. Keep, keep your meals simple, um, eliminate choice and decision and, and think about components What's my protein source for this meal? What's my carbohydrate source for this meal? If you're eating extra dietary fat, which I'm not a fan of, um, what's my fat source for this meal? Bam, bam, bam. And you're picking foods that are dominant in those macronutrients for each choice. That's the formula. You're pre-planning the meals ahead of, 24 hours ahead of time or you know, the night before. Um, you're going to eliminate choice and decision and excessive variety. You're going to have foundational foods and meals, and those, those foods and meals are going to be mostly single-ingredient, macro-dominant foods, okay? Um, so that's kind of, kind of the formula for, for success, all right? Um, again, not getting cute and trying to make all these exotic recipes and family-style recipes, uh, etc., all right, and then what you're going to, I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Okay, so you'll see this is the Nutrition X or Nutrition IX track app, which I recommend all of you use. Uh, most of you do use it. It's what I use, it's what I've always have used because it has the most verified foods. Um, you could also do this using My Fitness Pal or Eat This Much or one of the other 600 tracking apps out there. Okay, so th these principles and how I'm going to show you to do this will translate to any tracking app. All right. 
A lot of you guys talk about how you have a problem getting your protein in. All right. I'm going to show you as you plan your meals how to solve that problem. Okay. It's real easy. Um, you, when you're planning these meals, as you'll see I do, you're always going to start with what's my protein source from the meal and then work backwards. All right. So before I go any further, all right. In order to have success doing this, it should go without saying, but you need to have gone to the grocery store and have the foundational foods that you've chosen in your home, all right? If you don't have that going on, you're going to have, you can't do any of this stuff, right? Make sure you've been to the store and that you're stocked up. Now, in terms of, of uh, rotating foundational foods or, or your protein, carb, and fat sources, there's no right, there's no real rule as to how you do that or how often you do it. You can eat the same foundational foods and uniform eating is another key component or, or key trait of successful dieters. You can eat the same protein sources and carb sources for weeks on end if you want. Uh, you can swap them out weekly. You can swap them out daily if you want. I wouldn't recommend doing that. But you can rotate things. You get sick of something. Choose a new protein source. If you're sick of eating cod, switch to chicken breast. If you're sick of protein powder, choose deli turkey. It, it, there's, there's no hard and fast rule how you do it, but, but keeping some uniformity in your diet with the foods that you're eating and keeping it basic and compressed goes a long way. All right, but so you, you can change them weekly, you can change them monthly, you can change them every two months, I, you can change them every third day, it doesn't matter. But you should have some foundational foods. You've been to the store and you have them in your house, so you can do this. All right, so let's start. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to do this for tomorrow. All right, uh, this is exactly how I would do this. And this usually would take me five minutes to do if I wasn't trying to explain it in depth to you. Okay, so let's start with breakfast. Um, okay, I, I know I have uh, liquid egg whites and turkey breast in my home right now. I'm going to set my protein in this meal first and get it out of the way and get it to where I want it. All right, so I, you, th this is the desktop version of the app. You can do the exact same thing on the mobile version, same thing. So I'm gonna search egg whites. And because I eat these things all the time, it's in the commonly eaten foods database. It comes right up. Uh, I'm gonna take this. I eat two, 250 grams is fine, that's good. That's a lot of egg whites. I'm gonna log that food for breakfast, choose breakfast log the food. Okay. So now that's in there. All right. Um, now I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to mix turkey breast with those liquid egg whites, right? So I'm going to do, I have boar's head oven gold turkey breast in there. Um, I'm going to choose that. I'll probably go, uh, I don't know, 150 grams of that as well, because I'm targeting high forties to low sixties. Uh, protein grams in each meal. All right, so we're going to choose um, breakfast on the 17th. I'm going to log that food. Okay, and I think this, I made a mistake. I think I did. Uh, yeah, I did. I need to edit this. I chose that for today and not tomorrow. So, just sorry to mess this up. So, that's breakfast. I'm going to update it. And now it will show up for tomorrow. Okay, so now this meal has perfect 57 grams of protein. All right. Cool. So, I got my protein out of the way. That's set. All right. Now, uh, I'm, I'm targeting about a 500. I usually eat 500 calorie meals. I eat between 2,000 and 2,500 calories a day, depending. So, I got about 200 calories worth of carb. Uh, I think actually what I think I'll do here, I'll make some like breakfast soft tacos. So I'm going to, I have these mission carb counter tortillas in there. I know for a fact, here they are carb balanced flour tortillas. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to have two of these things. Uh, that's for breakfast on the 17th. Log foods. Okay, so perfect. This is about 430 calories for that meal. I got 67 grams of protein. Perfect. All right, let's move to lunch. Uh, what, do I, what do I have 
at home right now. Okay, I, I know I got chicken breast tenders thawed out in there right now. Uh, and I know I got some cauliflower rice. Let's go with that. Could be anything. All right, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna type in tenders and this should show up quickly. Actually, I'll search simple truth. Here, comes up. Because I eat these again a lot, it's database. It's also in my custom foods. I'm going to show you that at the end, the custom food list. That's important too. All right, so uh, cool. Uh, 200, perfect. Um, I might go 250 grams. That'll bump that up to um, 58 grams of protein. I'm going to change the date in the meal, lunch, Tuesday the 17th. Log the food. And it shows dinner, not a big deal. I'll just switch it back. Okay, so that gives me at lunch uh, 58 grams of protein right there. Perfect. All right. Close this out. And then I'm going to have cauliflower rice with this. And again, guys, this usually takes me five minutes to do. All right. Full year it pulls right up. It's in my custom food list. It's a it's microwaved rice cauliflower. It's 35 calories a packet. All right. I'm gonna choose that. I'm gonna do two packets of that. Uh, lunch on the 17th. Log the food. Boom. Uh, I got calories left here. All right. I want about 500 calories. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I have um, fat-free cheese singles, which are gross, but whatever. I'll melt it on there. All right. Uh, so here they are. It's this brand, Borden Dairy. They're 30 calories a slice. I'll do two. Uh, lunch. I don't know why it keeps changing that to dinner. Bear with me, guys. Okay, so I'm at 400 calories for that meal. Okay, you get the gist of it. I, I, I might, you know, at this point, I here, I'll just do it for you. I got Golden Graham cereal up there. I'll throw in some more carb here. Uh, 100 calories worth of that. This should come right up. Here it is. Here. 20 grams, I'll weigh the cereal out on a food scale. And I want to mention all of this stuff um, outside of the, the cauliflower rice packets because they're prepackaged. I just go off the label. Um, the meats, the turkey, the egg whites, the chicken, that's all measured out on a food scale. The, the cheese and the cauliflower rice, I just go by the label. Can you trust the label? Whatever. So I'll do that. Lunch, choose a date, 17th tomorrow all the food did it again <laughs> don't know why it keeps switching me to dinner okay so 471 calories in that meal uh, I got 71 grams of protein in that meal beautiful all right let's go to dinner I know I buy these pre-packaged um, Really lean sirloin steaks. They're prepackaged. Uh, I th they're like 200 and something calories uh, a piece. Really low fat, high protein. Uh, I make those in an air fryer um, every night. They're really, really good. They're expensive, but they're good. So I'll just type in sirloin. Here they are, organic beef sirloin. Again, prepackaged. It's on. You know, it has the label. It says. Gives you calorie, you know, one steak is, you know, X number of calories and then the grams in parentheses. I weigh it out to make sure and then I adjust the grams. It's usually pretty close to what the label says, though. So um, I'm going to do uh, dinner on the 17th. 
Okay, and that's going to give me right there, uh, how many grams? Of, that gives me 53 grams of protein. Perfect. That'll work. And then I got, um, I bought some just basic uh, russet potatoes, uh, yellow potatoes or whatever, white potato. Uh, I'm going to have basic steak and potatoes. All right, so I'll just search russet. This I've been doing 200 grams at night, so I'll just, you know, chop up russet potatoes and little slices, uh, throw them on a food scale until I get to 200 grams of those. I'll air fry those with the steak in 15 minutes, piece of cake, right? So I'll add this dinner on the 17th. 450 calorie meal. All right. So I'm going to shoot for 2000 calories tomorrow. It might be more. I don't know yet. So I got plenty to spare here. Uh, I'm at 196 grams of protein. And again, see how I set my protein in every meal first. That eliminates your protein problem, guys. Just set that first and then go from there. All right. So uh, I got about 650 calories left. I'm going to end what I always end with every day is usually my protein yogurt sludge some type of cereal in it or whatever else uh, so I will just search for Faye zero percent that's what I use uh, that is not accurate one second Actually, what I'll do, guys, I'm just going to copy and paste this from two days ago. Do, 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 do. So this is um, a cup and a half uh, of Greek yogurt. It's two containers of the Faye 0%. It's 180 calories. I'm going to do this as a late snack for tomorrow. Choose the date as the 17th. Boom. Let me copy that whole meal. I didn't want it to do that. Okay, so I got my yogurt. Now I'm going to put protein powder in my yogurt. Um, I'm using ISO 100. It should come right up in my, in my food log. Here it is. Um, one scoop, uh, that's 31 grams. By the way, I'll weigh that out. Again, I'll weigh the Greek yogurt out um, and then also um, the protein powder out in grams on a food scale. I just put a bowl on the food scale, plop the yogurt in, put the protein powder in, boom. So again, snack, late snack, choose date, 17th, log the food. All right, so. What do I have left? So I got about 300 calories left. I'm going to go again with cereal. I have cookie crisp cereal up there. Really good. This is where your fun foods come in, right? Most of what I've eaten to this point has been whole nutrient dense fiber and protein rich foods. At the end of the day, I will add some fun foods in once I've covered my protein basis. Okay. That's how you do it. It's, it's going to come out to maybe 15% of my total calories. So I'm going to do cookie crisp. Here it is. I ate this last night. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of this because I got calories left. I think I'll do uh, 60 grams, 228 calories. Snack, late snack on the 17th. Log the food. Boom, 518 calories. So I got some, I got more calories left. Uh, maybe I'll do my protein is huge. See, I'm at 260 just because I set my protein first in each meal, right? My carbs are still fairly low for me. This is below one calorie per pound of my body weight. I'll ramp up more cookie crisp. All right, let me adjust that. And you see, you can tinker with the grams to get it where you want it. Go to 70 grams.
Okay, so now I'm at 1940. I probably could have went to 75 or 80 grams of cereal. You get the gist of it. Close. There's my daily macros. Here's the formula, guys. Calorie deficit, 1914. I could have went up to 2,500 and still been in a nice deficit. I'm burning about 3,200 calories a day. Low fat, you can see 11% of my diet is coming from dietary fat. Notice how I didn't add avocado, olive oil, full fat cheese, nut butters. I didn't, I don't choose those foods because they're energy dense. Okay, you get a very small volume of food for a lot of calories. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I'm not saying don't ever eat dietary fat, uh, but honestly, if you're getting 10 to 15% of your, your calories from fat, through trace fats, through from carbs and protein, you're fine. Your fat bases are covered for hormonal health and all that crap. Okay, so calorie deficit, low fat, moderate carbohydrates. This, this is considered very moderate carbohydrate. People are like, oh my God, it's 186 grams of carbs. Guys, if you're eating about a, a gram of carb per pound of your body weight, that's a moderate carbohydrate diet, okay? A high carbohydrate diet is like, you know, you understand hard training athletes are eating three, four, 500 grams of carbs a day, okay? So very high fiber. This is actually low fiber for me, honestly. 44 grams of fiber, you should be shooting for 20 to 30 grams. Protein is massive at 261. I try to keep my protein 240 or above above one gram per pound of my body weight because I'm starting to gradually lose fat now. Obviously with Christmas, I'm not going hardcore with it, but I'm setting the stage and I'm dropping a little, you know, I'm down five, six pounds over the last three months doing this. I'll go harder because, but because I'm in a fat loss phase, my protein's way up, way up. So guys, that's how you do it. All right. Um, that, what I just showed you here is literally how I do it. And like I said, this would take me five minutes to do had I not done this whole screen recording for you. It would have been bam, 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 boom. Tomorrow when I wake up, I know exactly what the hell it is I'm eating. Okay. And I might change something. I might be like, ah, you know what? I don't, I don't want that egg white omelet. I think I'll have protein yogurt there too. I'll delete the egg whites and turkey and throw some yogurt in with protein powder. Not that I'm going to do that because I won't. But you, I at least have a game plan, all right? And it starts, go to the grocery store, get this stuff. What are my foundational foods? What do I want to eat this week? Pick three to four protein sources. Pick three to four carb sources. Single ingredient, macro dominant foods, foundational meals, simple to prepare, simple to track. None of these meals right here you see are going to be take me more than 10 or 15 minutes to make. This one, the steak and potatoes, they have to cook in an air fryer for 15 minutes, but the prep is nothing. You throw the steak in the air fryer, you chop some potatoes, throw some seasoning over it, bam. All right. And then I also want to say um, most of these meals you see, I usually are, am going to throw a, a low or no calorie condiment in with it. So like on the eggs, these these uh, turkey and egg white breakfast burrito, soft taco things, I'll throw some sriracha or hot sauce on there. Usually that's not doesn't have any calories, so I don't track it. Um, the uh, the cauliflower rice, I definitely here's an, here's a case where I'd add probably um, here. I'll just show you how to do it. I'd add some low sugar barbecue sauce to this. Here. So I'd add two tablespoons of, I live on G Hughes products. They're low, super low calorie marinades, sauces, barbecue sauces. So I'd probably add like, you know, a, I'd probably add four servings or I'm sorry, four tablespoons, which is like 60 grams. Um, I would, would weigh it out in grams. I'd throw the barbecue sauce on my cauliflower rice and chicken. So I'm going to do lunch tomorrow. Uh, lunch the 17th. Okay, so there you go. Um, so then I would have my rice and chicken bowl with barbecue sauce on it with my side of golden grams. All right. This last meal, um, I probably just do, um, I'm weird. I like Dijon, like brown mustard on potatoes. Call me strange, but I would put maybe 10 grams of mustard, which is like 10 calories. I'm not going to put that in there right now. You get the gist of it. 
I put that on there. So it's always protein source, carb source. Um, and then what am I going to season it with? I got 30 spices and rubs in my cabinet, right? What And then what low or no calorie condiment am I going to use on it? That's how I do meals. And it's super easy, all right? Super easy. Hey, look, maybe, maybe tomorrow night at dinner, it's Friday. Maybe I won't want to make this dinner. Maybe I'll go up to Chick-fil-A a half mile off the road. I delete these dinner foods out. I'd go to Chick-fil-A. I'd look on their menu board and get two grilled chicken sandwiches. They're like 350 calories a piece. I would just search for those in this app, Chick-fil-A grilled chicken sandwich, adjust the serving size of two sandwiches, log it in as my dinner. It, this is easy stuff. If I went to a convenience store for lunch, I would delete these foods and I would get beef jerky and almonds and maybe a protein bar, right? And I would just scan the barcode on all those and I would log it in as my lunch. This is simple stuff. It's not hard. It's it's tedious. But the more that you do this, like I said, I have I will have five minutes usually doing this. Try pl planning this out the day before. And then, you know, obviously you have the time it takes to make the meals. You know, you could prep some of this the night before if you wanted to. I have the luxury of working from home. I don't have to go to an office. I can go to the store a lot and I can cook every meal from home on the spot. In your situation, you may not be able to do that and you might have to do a little prep work the night before. It is what it is. All right. So that's how you do it. That's how you pre-plan your meals for success. Uh, I would highly recommend that you take all of this advice I just gave you and apply it immediately. All right. The more you do this and the more you practice it, the easier it gets. All right. But this, I, I, this is just my default mode. This is not difficult to do. Once you've done this repeatedly for a couple weeks, it, this is easy. All right. So I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks for viewing. If you have any comments about this, uh, shoot me a message on the app or um, send me an email. Oh, before I forget, I'm just going to cover this now. I know this is long. Custom foods. Get, here's my list of custom foods. It's extensive. Look at all this. All right. This doesn't even scratch the surface. I can't scroll down anymore. There's... I mean, I have way more than this in here. I don't know why it won't let me scroll. Every get in the habit. Every time you go to a, go to the store, right? Any new food that you buy, insert that food into the app as a custom food. All right. You just go up to create food, and in the app, there's a little plus sign. I right. create a custom food. I would literally, if I bought a new, I don't know, um, if I bought a, a, a new package of microwave rice, a brand that I normally don't use, I would type in, you know, Vitae uh, microwave rice, one packet, and then I would look at the food label of that rice or whatever it would be. Calories, fat, protein, carb, grams, fiber, whatever. You would then hit submit at the bottom. Then that would be added to your custom food database. It's a game changer, guys. Over the course of many months, you will accumulate dozens upon dozens of foods. That way, when you want to track it or pre-plan your meals, you can go in your custom foods and easily copy and paste or, or, or you know log the food into a meal. You can change the amounts, whatever. That's another, I'm glad I remembered to do this because it's huge. All right. And then you can also, in the search bar of the app, you can search for, type in whatever, the brand or the, the chicken or steak, and it'll come up in your custom foods. Bam. Okay. And you can just log it and adjust it and what and copy and paste them from meal to meal. So that's it. Uh, again, any questions on this, reach out to me. I'm happy to talk about it. Thanks.